Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. A little late on my coloring chat this week, but thought we would color out of a series of books that I haven't colored in in a long time, but yet I really like them. And that is the Mystery Mosaics Coloring Books. These are by Mindwear. You can get um, some of these on Amazon. Um, however, the whole line of them are over on Mindwear's uh, website. And I am going to be coloring with my Artix Oros uh, markers. Now Artix has both a chisel tip line and a brush tip line. This is the brush tip line called uh, Oros. And what is their chisel tip line? Elp. Um, so I will leave all links down below in the description. Um, I'll also leave Mindware's direct website if you want to go check the books out over there. Um, not sure if this exact book, this is book 10, is available on Amazon, but I will leave a link to one of their books over there if book 10 isn't available. So, let me get this one back in the case. There we go. And I picked out this picture. I have my colors picked out. Um, yeah, and we got the colors here. Um, but again, I have my colors picked out already. So, let's just chat for a while. I will zoom you in and we'll get caught up a little bit. All right, what number shall we start with? Let's start with 15 because there's a lot of them over here. And 15 is olive green, and I picked number 48. It's called olive green, but it's not really an olive green. It's more of a, a yellow green. Okay, so where are our 15s over here? And alcohol marker, ooh, speaking of which, it's alcohol marker. Let's put a sheet back behind Alcohol marker actually worked good in here. When I initially started coloring in these books, I used the Crayola Super Tips a lot. They work really good in here too. But because the lines are so thick and they are single-sided, alcohol marker works really good in here too. Okay, now hopefully being zoomed in, you won't see my head too much because I'm kind of bent over my book here. So how is everybody doing? How was your weekend? Yesterday was the first day of spring. Yay! We've been seeing the robins around here for a bit now. And Bob seen them, was it last week? And he's like, you know, the old wives tale. When you see the first robin, there's three more snowfalls. <laughs> so, yeah. And we are supposed to get snow this week. It's been so gorgeous. Oh, this past weekend was just beautiful. We almost hit 60. Yeah. Oh, it was so nice could actually go out without a coat on. Yeah, it's been a long time since we've been able to do that. And I actually just had my t-shirt on a few times when I took Bella out. That's really been a long time since I've been able to do that. Usually, I always have my sweatshirt on. So it was, oh, it was so, so nice. I imagine there were some people that had shorts on. <laughs> of course, we have kids around here, especially guys that wear shorts all winter. Doesn't matter if it's 
20 below zero. They have shorts on. It's one time, like I said, that's usually the young kids. But this one time I had gone to Walmart to get groceries. And when I was putting my groceries in the car, there was quite an older gentleman that had, and it was cold out. Um, I don't think it was below zero, but it, it was cold. And yeah, he was an older gentleman and he had shorts on and a t-shirt. He didn't even have a jacket on. Yeah. I'm like, oh my heavens, guy. It was cold and windy. And we do have some homeless people that kind of like to hang out <laughs> around Walmart. But this guy didn't look like he was homeless. For a, a smaller city, it kind of amazes me the number of homeless people we have in the city. It's really sad. Sad, sad, sad. And when it gets really cold out, they open up what's called a warming center for them. Um, so, you know, at least when it's way below zero, they have somewhere to go to get out of the cold, get a hot meal and a nice warm shower. But, yeah, still really sad. And I know every... Every city has, has, you know, these homeless people, but, yeah. Now, the picture that I picked out to color, because, yes, I cheat and I look at the answers in the back. <laughs> this picture reminded me of spring. So I decided to do this one. I'm all ready for spring. I got the watch band changed. Got the face on my watch changed. So yes, I'm all ready for spring. <laughs> Couldn't have the St. Patrick's Day one on anymore, right? So I got a few videos recorded over the weekend. I didn't get them quite all edited and up on the channel yet um, but I will be finishing those two today and at least get this color and chat up today and the rest of them then of course will be up during the week there's a few more I want to get recorded, but I don't know if I'm going to get them done during the week or not. Got a few things going on. And then next week, Monday and Tuesday, I'll have the kiddos. I'll have Maddie two days and then Levi. I'll have one of those days also because they're on spring break next week. And I have not seen little Maddie in a long time. Levi, I've had a few times. I suppose we can just go down like this. Um, because he was sick over the past few months. And now Maddie was sick last week, but I had so many doctor appointments, and we'll go we'll go over that. Um, that the day she was sick, I couldn't take her, and Heather was so busy at work. I felt so bad not being able to take her. So Heather had to take off work one day. Her fiance Adam took off to stay home with Maddie, but, okay, where are some more 15s, um, because he was sick too, so 
So it was just a bug going around, I guess. But those kids sure get sick a lot. And I'm sure it has something to do with, you know, all the masking requirements and some of them being lifted now. These kids haven't been exposed to germs like they normally are. Okay, I think that's all the 15s there. Here's some. So yeah, they're, and I'm sure it's not just them. If you're new to my channel, these are my grandkids. And I used to babysit them full time. But Maddie, or Madison, is five. She'll be six this year. Oh my gosh. Um, so she's in kindergarten. And then Heather wanted to get Levi, who is two, into a daycare situation because Maddie was, it was really hard to leave her at school and, you know, for Maddie to uh, want mom to say goodbye, it was really hard for her to let go because she was so used to being either with mom or with me. So yeah, she wanted to get Levi acclimated to a daycare situation so that he was used to mom going but yet knowing that she'll be back. So, and also, you know, just the environment itself, being exposed to other kids, having to learn to share, you know, toys, and just getting that whole environment that he wouldn't have gotten here, you know, staying home with grandma, so... No longer in babysitting. Let's see, we have a 15 in here. I'm kind of shaky again today. Ugh, hate that. Some days I'm good, and some days I'm not. This is kind of a funky color. If uh, you're wondering, in the front of this book, isn't that one pretty? <laughs> nice and bright and colorful. In the front of this book is the color palette that you need. So there are 36 colors in all of these Mystery Mosaic coloring books. So yeah, the color, color chart is in the front of the books. Okay. We have some 15s. So, yeah, I'll have the the kiddos next week. Let's go up here and then we'll go down. Now, the one thing about using alcohol markers, when you do have these half squares, they do kind of bleed over the lines because they're thin lines in there. Um, so I try to be a little careful, but typically it'll bleed over. <laughs> but that's okay. In the long run, your picture still turns out fine. We'll just do two squares at a time. So yeah, what went on in your neck of the woods this past weekend? It was pretty uneventful here. Got a few things done around the house. These are all 15s, okay. Um, but yeah, I wrote out a to-do list. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> My to-do list got really long. <laughs> I did get a few things marked off last week and over the weekend, so that made me feel good. How many other people keep to-do lists? I am very much a list person. So, yeah, I make out all kinds of lists. <laughs> and, yeah, I got a few things marked off, but, ooh, there's a lot of stuff on there yet to do. 
we'll get them done eventually. Some of them are, you know, relatively quick things to do. So kind of uh, get those done first. <laughs> so at least I can mark something off. And then the harder ones, yeah. The ones that take a while. I have a lot of them on there yet. If you are a person that writes out to-do lists, do you ever write something down that you've already done just so you have the satisfaction of marking that one off? <laughs> it feels so good to mark something off your to-do list. <laughs> I typically don't, but I have already done it. Oh my gosh. Funny. Yeah, so I have some things to do that are going to take longer. Like cleaning up my craft room here. And cleaning up my diamond painting room. I want to get the closet cleaned out in my diamond painting room. I'm going to have Bob make me some shelves in my closet in my bedroom. Because I really, I hang up very, very few things. I no longer wear dress clothes that have to be hung up. So about the only thing that I really have hanging in my closet, I bought a... Uh, what would you call it? It's like a, a stacked shelf that hangs from the, the rod. And I got that because when they put the heating to the upstairs, if you're new to my channel, when we bought this house about a year and a half ago, there was no heat going upstairs. <laughs> so that was a pain in the butt. Okay, we got 13s here. Um, and they had to take away one of my nice big drawers that were, they're built into the wall, but I had some big bulky sweaters and stuff like that in there. So I had nowhere else to go with them. So I just bought one of those like hanging shelf things. There's like little cubbies and I think there's like five little cubbies. And so I have that hanging up in just a couple of dress clothes. Um, pair of pants, couple jackets. So yeah, the other end of my closet is just, there's, you know, wasted space. And then way in the corner, I do have some shelves. So I asked him if he could just extend those shelves and just have some nice deep shelves on that side of my closet. So it would be awesome to be able to have more storage. There are some things in my diamond painting room that are not diamond painting related. I have some binders in there that are actually coloring related. Okay. That went fast. Now there are some more 15s through here, but let's go to another color. Okay. What colors do we have up here? We have some eights. Let's, let's go to the eights. And it's really hard to see some of these because they're in the, the binding. But eight is orange, and again, for me, I have them all figured out, so I know what the colors are. So eight is orange. I have picked number 23. Okay, number eight. Yeah, like I said, was me shaking. This is probably not the best kind of picture to uh, pick to color with, <laughs> with alcohol markers. But when I decided on this book, it wasn't this morning, it was yesterday, when I was okay. Oh, yeah. So right now, it is raining outside, but that's okay. We'll take rain better than that 
white fluffy stuff that has been coming down from the sky for months and months and months. With it being the first day of spring yesterday, yes, we will take rain. But now, like I said, later this week, we're supposed to get snow because we're supposed to cool way off into the 30s. Bleh. So, yeah, par for the course in spring, right? And I'm sure it's not just here in Wisconsin. Mother Nature is very fickle in... Uh, spring and fall. She doesn't know what the heck she wants. <laughs> I always say Mother Nature has PMS twice a year. <laughs> doesn't know what she wants. Isn't there medication for that? <laughs> So, yeah, my appointments last week went pretty good. I got some pretty good news. So on, let's see, on Monday, I had to go for my COVID test for my appointment on Thursday. And I, you know, hardly ever leave the house to begin with, much less drive in winter weather. I do not like driving in snow whatsoever anymore. But we were only supposed to get like an inch of snow, and I thought, well, I can handle that. Um, the site where we have to go for our COVID test is quite a ways from our place. Um, but I thought, eh, you know, an inch of snow. Now, last time when they predicted snow, they predicted, oh my gosh, so much. And, you know, all the schools called off school and everything in preparation for this big snowstorm. And then we only got like an inch of snow. <laughs> it was hilarious. Uh, I talked about that in a previous color and chat. Well, this time it was the opposite. <clears throat> we were only supposed to get, yeah, an inch to maybe two. Yeah, I was driving in the middle of a snow storm and we got six inches. A really slippery wet crap. Oh my god, I was a nervous wreck. Oh yeah, that that was not fun. On the way to the testing site. Let's see, let's pick out another number. Let's do some of these twelves up here. Twelve is dark. Green, 52. There we go. Um, yeah, seen uh, maybe like three accidents going to the testing site. I'm like, oh my god. Uh, so it isn't just me. These roads are slippery. <laughs> I was just white knuckled, you know, driving all the way through. And, you know, you, you finally get to the testing site for a 30-second swab, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, this was worth it. Oh, my gosh. And then, yeah, on the way back, by then, the roads were even worse. And, oh, yeah, I've seen a number of additional accidents. <laughs> I'm like, just let me get home. Just let me get home. Traffic was going, you know, maybe 40 miles an hour. <laughs> so at least everybody was going slow and not just me. 
And 40 was plenty fast for me. But, yeah, slow and steady wins the race, right? And, yes, I finally got home, parked in the garage, and I went, oh. <laughs> it was such a relief to get home. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I was so hanging onto the steering wheel so hard. <laughs> my hands hurt. Oh, my heavens. But at least the COVID test was negative, like I knew it was going to be. But, yeah, they don't take your word for it, so. <laughs> they gotta have proof. But, yeah, such a waste <laughs> going all the way down there and for a, not even a 30-second test. Good heavens. But I couldn't really reschedule because I had to have that at least, what is it, 72 hours before a procedure? So, yeah, had to go. And Bob wasn't here. He had gone, because again, we weren't thinking we we're supposed to get that much. So, I forgot where Bob had gone. But, yeah, he wasn't home, so I really was out of options. And when I first took off, it didn't look that bad. As I got out on the main highways, it was getting worse and worse. <laughs> yeah, so that was fun. So that's how my week started out. And I thought, oh heavens, I have all these appointments this week. Oh, please tell me the rest of the week's going to be better. <laughs> and yeah, the rest of the week went smoothly. Um, I had my appointments for my heart um, to appointments on Tuesday. In the morning, I had Bella. I had my echocardiogram. And then, so that was at 8.30. You would think they could have scheduled my next procedure shortly after that, but no. My next procedure wasn't until noon. Well, the echo doesn't take real long. Um, so I just came back home. <laughs> and I was supposed to have a driver. It was a cardiac CT scan. Um, but then when they called about, um, you know, your pre-check-in or whatever, you know, she, she informed me that they typically only say, you know, to have a driver just in case you need the anti-anxiety med medication. I said, well, I definitely won't need that. I don't get claustrophobic in a, you know, CT tube or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, that doesn't bother me at all. And, but the other med they may have to give you is to slow your heart rate down if it's beating too fast. But I don't think if I was given that, that I wouldn't be able to drive anyhow. So I told Bob, no, I said, I'm not gonna need a driver. So yeah, I just drove myself back in at noon. So yeah, went in, came home, went in, came home. What a waste of gas. Ugh, especially when it's so expensive right now. Um, so yeah, went in for those and had to wait for the results, of course. All the, you know, results were sent over to my cardiologist. Um, he got back to me, well, the office did, not he himself, of course. Um, got back to me and... For the most part, everything looked pretty good. 
I do have some calcification in my aorta and um, in the main arteries going down your legs. And my heart is enlarged just a little. Not, you know, not anything to be too concerned about. And what was the other thing? But she said it's actually kind of, oh, an aneurysm. And I heard that and right away I'm kind of freaking out. And she says it's actually kind of common. But when they see an aneurysm, they like it to be under four centimeters long. And mine was a little over four centimeters long. So they want to keep an eye on that. So I have to go back next year again um, for the testing again. And, the, you know, the tests, of course, weren't bad. You know, the one bad part, though? And this is what killed me. <laughs> okay, I shouldn't say kill me. That that was a bad term when you're talking about heart. <laughs> Is before the cardiac CT scan, you can't have caffeine for 24 hours beforehand. <laughs> That's a doozer. Now, I'm not a coffee drinker, but... I do drink a lot of Diet Mountain Dew, so I couldn't have any Diet Mountain Dew. I did buy some uh, Diet uh, a w Root Beer because Root Beer doesn't have caffeine. That actually tasted pretty good. So it, it ended up not being as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, but yeah, for anybody that is a heavy coffee drinker, because you can't even have the decaffeinated coffee because there still is actually a little bit of caffeine in decaffeinated coffee. So even decaf products you can't have. And I'm like, holy guacamole. But yeah, at least I'm not a, a coffee or a big tea drinker or, you know, something else that has a lot of caffeine in because... Yeah, I know there are a lot of very heavy coffee drinkers that, yeah, that would be very hard for them, including Bob. He, well, he's not real bad, not like some people, <laughs> but he does like his coffee. The only problem I had then was giving up that caffeine when your body is used to caffeine and you all of a sudden give it up, oh, you get a headache. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That was nasty. And for some reason, I was thinking that I also couldn't have meds um, to help me with that pain. Oh my gosh, that headache was getting bad. Let's see, 12 goes down to here. Yeah, it was getting nasty. But then I went and I read the instructions again, and yeah, I could have my all my medications and stuff, except for, you know, no food and drink. I think it was like two hours before or something like that. So I'm like, okay. We're going to go take a few extra strength, extra strength Tylenol. And while it didn't take it all away, it was much better. It wasn't quite pounding because the headache had started the night before. And so then when you wake up with a headache, oh, nothing worse than waking up with a major headache. Oh, I hate that. Okay, we have a lot of 13s in here, too. 13s is green, regular green. 55. I can't drive. 55. Okay. So, yeah. But, like I said, that all went fine. Yay. Um, and then... On 
Thursday I had my other test and that's what I needed the COVID test for and they call it surgery it's like it's not surgery all it was was an upper endoscopy where they go down your throat with this little bitty camera <laughs> and they were looking for because I had the beginnings of an ulcer which after you've had gastric bypass surgery an ulcer is not a good thing I mean an ulcer is not good for anybody but for somebody that has had gastric bypass surgery it is even worse uh, yeah they would have to I mean if it got bad enough uh, my surgeon that did my original gastric bypass would have to go back in there and kind of redo it all so it is a major major deal um, so that is the one that I you know couldn't eat or drink after midnight and but at least I didn't have to give up caffeine <laughs> Uh, give and take give and take right um so yeah went in for that and that one I did have to have a driver for because that you are sedated for you're put under which thank heavens because who wants to be awake when you have a scope going down your throat right Blech. Any 13s? So I had to wait for those results. And yay, it seems to be resolving. She had put me on a stronger, uh, I guess technically it's an antacid. Um, well, I shouldn't say antacid. It, it's to help heal an ulcer. And then... Um, I always took a lower dose every day to prevent one from forming, but it was a very low dose. Well, now she increased the dosage, and I got to take that twice a day, half hour before meals, and it's like, got to remember, you know, half hour before meals. But it really helps because Bob has a med also, that he has to take a half an hour before meals and it's basically the same thing as mine only a different brand so you know if one of us forgets the other one remembers Bob typically remembers more than I do so it's like honey we gotta take our pills <laughs> oh my heavens tail getting old well, I guess this doesn't mean you're getting old. Anybody could uh, take this. Anybody at any age could get ulcers. And Bob's, too, is to prevent him from getting an ulcer because with his esophageal cancer and having his esophagus removed, he no longer has that flap to prevent his stomach contents and the acid itself and all of that from coming back up. And so, yeah, they, they want to curb that amount of acid. And that's why he can't ever lay flat. He always has to be sitting up a little bit, so he has to sleep that way. And so he actually has... Uh, bed that raises and lowers like a hospital bed and uh, yeah boy I got off my sidetrack didn't I um, so yeah it was good news and then Bob on Wednesday <laughs> had his cancer recheck and his went good also everything looked good in his blood work so what is number 14 light green okay so yeah 
Last week, both of our appointments went pretty well. Yay! So yeah, last week was just appointment after appointment after appointment. And like I said, poor Maddie was sick, but between Bob and I, we were so busy with appointments. And I didn't tell anybody about my heart appointments. It's like, why get the family and everybody worked up when it could possibly be nothing? So I thought, I'm going to wait until I have these tests. And then if anything shows up where, you know, it could potentially affect me or, you know, something more serious is wrong, then I would maybe <laughs> let them know. So I didn't tell my kids or anybody, my siblings or no. I just told you guys, my friends. <laughs> and yeah, everything turned out fine. So I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> so don't say anything. Shh. Don't want the kids to find out. Of course, like I said, we'll see. nothing too drastic being wrong. It's okay. All right. Ooh, I can hear the rain outside. All right. Bob was busy outside this morning. Um, again, if you're new to my channel, Last winter, well, this past winter, this winter, whatever, because technically our, well, technically our winter is over because yesterday was the first day of spring, but again, Mother Nature doesn't know that. Um, but this winter, we had a huge, huge windstorm. I mean, we had like 60 some mile an hour winds. It was horrible we have a had <laughs> past tense had a metal shed on the west side of our house that got blown down up against our house 19 is late blue 185 and yeah demolished it and so we had to put all of the contents and try and fit them into our garage. Yeah, that was fun, but we managed to do it and still be able to fit both cars in the garage. It is cramped as hell, but... <laughs> We managed to do it. Is that the only 19s? What? Yeah, I don't see you anymore. Yeah, okay. Fine. 21s then. Aqua. And so the base um, that the shed was on, it wasn't a permanent base, you know, like on concrete. Uh, aqua is 66. It was on like wood, um, which was starting to rot and stuff. It, it wasn't in, you know, the floor wasn't in the best conditions. And Bob wanted to redo the floor anyhow this past summer. But he did manage, you know, after the shed blew down. Um, managed to get all the twisted metal and everything all taken down and all the nuts and bolts taken out and um, tore it all down. There was a guy that he knew that collects um, metal of any sort and his son gets it and it's a way for his son to earn money. Um, getting scrap metal because 
you know, scrap metal is worth money. And so his son and the dad that Bob knows came over and picked it all up. Bob had it all in nice little neat piles. So we did get rid of the metal part of the shed, but the wood base was all there yet. So Bob was busy this morning getting that all apart. And I was wondering where the heck he was going to be taking all of that. And here he, our uh, garbage got picked up this morning. We had regular garbage and recycling picked up. Well, the regular garbage was already picked up. Those are nice, great big bins. <laughs> so he used the garbage bins to put all of the those, oh, let's get this back in. All them big pieces of wood and all of that. Number 18, turquoise, 65. Um, and then where his brother lives, out in the country, they have um, an area behind their house that they use for dumping stuff like that. Um, and so Bob took each load all the way out there because he had the trailer yet um, from yesterday. I'll get into that in a minute. Um, yeah, hauled it all the way out. Oh, no, he didn't have the trailer. He has this thing that he hooks on the back of his car that you can put luggage and stuff on, you know, the, this little metal rack, sort of, that you can attach to your car. And so he strapped the garbage bin on the back of the car and took it out there. But yeah, most all of it is gone. He's saying we'll probably have to rebuild the shed right there. and. We were hoping on not having to do that. We were kind of hoping on being able to put it over by the fenced-in area and we'd have, be able to have more lawn on that side, but Bob doesn't think it's going to work. Okay, I think that's all the 18s. So we have a few 17s, which is regular blue, 71. Where's my 71? There we go. Um, so yeah, he got most of all that wood out of there. And like I said, it was nothing to keep. Otherwise, believe me, he would have. He keeps everything, but most of it was partially rotten through. And yeah, the flooring was in sad shape in that shed. Under that was, you know, some good, like, two-by-fours and stuff. So I don't know. He may save that. But the flooring itself was just plywood, and that's what was rotting and stuff. So he got rid of all of that. But the reason why he had this, the trailer yesterday, and that's why I was thinking he had the trailer today, we... Uh, when we moved in here, there was an old refrigerator out in the garage, which they had left. And it wasn't that old. It was a stainless steel one, just a, a smaller refrigerator. So stainless steel, you know, it wasn't that old. And, you know, it was scratched up and whatever, you know. But, and it worked. We really didn't use it. When we bought 50 pounds of hamburger, because Heather knew somebody um, that did that, and that's the main meat that we use the most, um, then we used the freezer out there. And it was winter time this past winter, and the one time I went to just kind of check on it, make sure the freezer was running, it had been a little warmer out. It wasn't below zero or anything. Glad I checked because 
instead of being rock hard frozen like it was, it was starting to thaw. I could just feel that it, you know, wasn't rock hard. It was still, you know, frozen. So it it didn't, you know, go to waste or anything. But <laughs> we didn't want it to thaw out anymore. White green, 47. So we had to uh, do some changing around in our freezer here in the house and get all of that hamburger in our fridge or freezer here in the house. So man, we've really been having to jam things together, right? First the garage, then the freezer. Man, yeah. And we did it. It's all in here. But, yeah, so we don't know if when it's really, because before that it was running. When we first bought the place, you know, and in fall it was running. Because I had bought in some soda and some beer and stuff, wine coolers for the people that were helping us move. And so I stuck those out, you know, turned the fridge on ahead of time and put those in the fridge out there. And, you know, it worked. So we had soda out there and whatnot, but eventually we thought, why run it for just that little bit, you know? Especially with being a little bit of an older fridge, it probably wasn't energy efficient and... So, we opted to unplug it. So, it wasn't running for a while. But then when we decided to, well, when we got the meat, we did plug it in, make sure it was working, and it was. So, we thought, okay, we're, we're safe to put the hamburger in there. Hmm, <laughs> come to find it. So... It seems to not work when it gets real cold. Well, of course, it's not going to kick in when it's real cold, right? And a fridge and a freezer can't prevent food from freezing because it doesn't have a warmer in it. <laughs> so the only thing you can really keep out in the fridge during the winter is frozen food, but yet if it warms up at all above freezing, yeah, then anything frozen you're going to have problems with too. So, yeah, so it must not kick back in once it starts warming up just a little bit out there. Um, but otherwise it works fine. Well, my daughter was looking my oldest daughter was looking for a fridge and you know I said well I have this one that you know we could probably get rid of because we're really not using it just taking up precious space in our garage now that space is a premium out there so she wasn't able to get a trailer, come get it picked up, because she is extremely busy. And it's like, oh, we really want this fridge out of here. So Bob went and got his brother's truck that has a hitch on. And Bob has a trailer out there, because don't have the room here in town to keep it. And so, yeah, he went out there, got that, and put the fridge on a dolly, pushed it up the ramp onto the trailer, strapped it all in, took it up on my daughter's. Now, heaven only knows when it'll actually get in her house, because she wasn't home at the time. Um... She's kind of a den leader for Cub Scouts, so they were doing that. And uh, so she just left one of the garage doors open. There, she has a three-stall garage. 
So Bob just took it out there and put it in the garage. The one problem is going to be <laughs> she measured the doorway. We measured the fridge. Yeah, it ain't going to fit through the doorway. It's going to be a very, very tight squeeze, even taking the doors of the freezer and fridge off. <laughs> and same with hers that she has in her house currently. Yeah, so the doors will have to be taken off that refrigerator too. 11 is yellow, 45. Can't tell what it is yet. Ugh. So, I don't know, but Tanya told me, you know, Bob shouldn't worry about it because she has peoples <laughs> that'll help her. So, she wants to get it in the house in the next month. Well, I'm not going to hold my breath because... My daughter is actually a bigger procrastinator than me. <laughs> and I'm a big procrastinator. <laughs> I will admit it. Hmm, just those 11s. Okay, let's go to 10s. Light golden. This was probably one of the hardest colors to find. Because it's an odd color. Like goldenrod, 34, 34. Oops, I gotta put that marker up there. I think it was this like golden. I, I can't, I can't remember. There were a few colors that were kind of hard to match up. So of course they're not matched up perfectly, but doesn't matter. So yeah, we'll see when that fridge actually gets in her house. <laughs> Because yeah, she, she has a working fridge in her house, but sounds like it might be on its last legs, and it's just, yeah, she's having problems with it. And with two growing boys, yeah, you need a fridge. Growing boys can eat you out of house and home. I don't know why they eat so much more than girls, but they do. I know from when I had my girls versus my son. And yeah, there is definitely a difference. Has anybody out there noticed that too? If you've had any boys and any girls? I think there's a difference anyhow. All right, let's go to number six. Red. So we got number 11. Very colorful, huh? Starting to come into, come into, sh come into shape. Starting to take shape, starting to take form. Yeah, one of those. So we finally got the fridge out of the garage. So rearranged the garage just a little bit. Bob has said for the gazillionth time, yeah, I just got to get rid of some of this shit. <laughs> I said, Bob, you know how many times you have said that? You have been saying that for about three, four years now, especially when we had to pack up the other house before we moved. I took all summer to go through every single closet and downstairs and three piles, toss, keep, donate, right? And so, yeah, I was working and working on that. Thank heavens it was the summer that Heather was off on maternity leave before she had Levi, so it worked out perfectly. And I kept bugging Bob. He had this back room that was back behind the garage, that was his work area, completely full of tools and this and that. And ugh. Bob is a very, how should I say, a very clean person. And boy, I bled these over. Oh, well. <laughs> 
What's number seven? Maybe something that'll cover it up. Red orange. Yeah, that won't be too bad then. So red orange is twenty two. And yeah, so it was unusual for him to have something looking like that. I mean, it was an organized mess, shall we say? <laughs> there is such a thing. And he put it off and put it off and put it off about packing up this stuff, which again, Bob is not a procrastinator either. He's always like, get it done and then it's done, you know? Me, I'm like, yeah, I can do that later. Or, yeah, I can do that tomorrow. <laughs> I'm awful. And, yeah, but it was the week before we were moving. And he finally decided, okay, I'm going to start packing up this stuff. Did he actually go through any of the stuff and throw out anything? Nope. Not a single thing. He threw everything in boxes. Nothing organized. <laughs> Just tossed everything in there. He had a, a big uh, black wagon that actually turn, you know, flips up and, and dumps. Put a whole bunch of stuff in there. <laughs> so, yeah. And now it's all here. Some's out in the garage, some's in the basement. And then he wonders why he can't find some stuff. <laughs> like I said, it's so out of character for him. Uh, but that's when he was working full time too. So, you know, he didn't have his days to do it. He only had the weekends. Well, Fridays, he worked four day weeks. So, but yeah, it, it was out of character for him. And I kept bugging him, you know, but I, I didn't want to nag either. It's like, Bob, you got to get packing. And it still didn't happen until, yeah, the week, the weekend before we were moving. Well, I guess I should say I was moving because it was my house. <laughs> Um, I'm the one who bought it. So it was more my house than his, but he had kind of moved all of his stuff, and especially when he was diagnosed with cancer because then he had to have a feeding tube and everything installed, and I helped him with... Um, he would actually get cans of formula different than baby formula but you know and you had to dump like five cans of that into this bag and you hook it up to this machine it looks just like an IV machine and you had to regulate the flow and all this stuff so I would always hook that up for him and stuff so yeah he just stayed with me then and he's been with me at my house ever since, which is fine. He could have moved in with me before then even, so doesn't matter. Now I bet you you can see what it is, right? It's a pretty colorful birdie. Spring. And yeah, boy, we have the robins around here. Actually, it was a few weeks ago that, oh, I bet you almost a month ago. It was really early. And I seen some geese flying back already. And I'm like, holy cow. Gives no meaning to the saying, early bird gets the worm. <laughs> Sorry, that was a groaner, I know. All right, we have some more 15s up here. 
maybe for the last part of this color and chat we'll just do some more of the greens and get that out of the way that was that olive green F -f -f that weird color green <laughs> okay that was 15 yeah so yeah what's what's the weather like by you guys is it warming up by you too because yeah spring is on the way i know it eventually it will get here so i don't know if i ever told you you know we had gotten that humidifier um, because our air is so dry in this house. Oh yeah, I think I did talk about it <laughs> when I talked about kidding up that diamond painting and how I couldn't get the little plastic baggies off my hands because of the static. And then I'd try throwing them into the garbage can and they would jump right back out. <laughs> I still got to laugh about that every time I think of it. No matter how hard I tried to throw them in the... The little garbage can that I had next to me, it's boink, boink. Yeah, I, I really wish I would have got that on camera. It was hilarious. But, so we did get that humidifier. And wouldn't you know it, within two weeks of having that humidifier, it leaked all over the carpeting and that has a large water tank in it it's uh five and a half gallons <laughs> and bob always fills it up before we go to bed unless it's almost full you know if, if he just filled it not too long before that so yes my carpeting was soaked oh my gosh when I first came down from upstairs, when I first got up, I had, you know, of course, accidentally stepped in some. It, it didn't feel soaking wet. So I, of course, first blamed poor Bella. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she peed in the house? She never does that well I guess I shouldn't say never if she does do it it's more our fault than hers because we don't notice you know her signals that she had to go out so I typically do not yell at her if she ends up peeing in the house because yeah it's more our fault but I'm like when would she have done that because I had just gotten up she sleeps with me. Well, at least that night she did. When would she have gone on the floor? I was just mind boggled. And so then I went to start sopping it up, right? Then I noticed where all the water was coming from. And it was growing. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I don't know how many huge bath towels I went through <laughs> trying to get up all that water. Finally, I had gotten up as much as I possibly could um, and had even gotten another set of towels out just to make sure. And there wasn't much more, you know, coming up off the carpet so I figured well we'll just have to leave it dry now we turned on a fan over there to help speed up the drying thought we were good right well a few days later well we had called the manufacturer of the humidifier and they sent us a new tank the motor and everything was fine um, it was the tank itself that cracked the casing I should say and so they sent us a new case to put everything in there's 12s and 13s over here so let's do the 12s 52 again and uh, so yeah we had gotten that but uh, before then my 13s are 
can't remember. No, dark green, we're doing 12s. Short memory. <laughs> um, all of a sudden, and Bob doesn't have the best of sniffers, so he didn't even smell it. I could start smelling a real musty smell because I'm sure not only the padding, or not only the carpeting, but the padding underneath got absolutely drenched. And so, yeah, it started getting real musty smelling. So how do you get rid of musty smell in the carpeting? What I ended up doing is I have uh, this Arm & Hammer I like to use it on the carpeting every once in a while just to freshen up the room. It's a white powder that you sprinkle all over your carpeting and then you let it sit for a bit and then you vacuum everything up, you know, vacuum as normal. And I used this in the other house too and I really liked how it made the, the house smell. And so I thought, well, because by this time it the carpeting was, you know, pretty much dry, or it was dry to the touch anyhow. So I thought, I'm going to pour a bunch of <laughs> that powder over the entire area, and then some, <laughs> where this thing had leaked. And I'm going to leave it sit on there for a day. Even if we walk on it, I kind of wanted to get it down into the padding, so I kind of purposely walked on it <laughs> more than normal. Let's get this dark green away. Where? Oh, I got that blue in the wrong area. Hope my head isn't in the way. It is. So sorry. <laughs> you seen my messy hair? All right. Number 13, that's our regular green, yeah. And, yeah, left that on there, kind of walked on it more than normal because it's not a part of the carpet that we typically walk on a whole lot. So I knew it wouldn't get walked on much. So, yeah, I purposely walked on it for a while. And then... Um, couple days later I vacuumed everything up and it seems to have taken away that musty smell so um but I was just wondering do you guys have any remedies for musty smell in case this happens again god forbid oh we have a bunch more 12s is that the last of this color. No, we have a 13 right here. Why did they just throw one in here and there? Ugh. Then we have a couple 12s. And then, oh boy, there was my head again. Oh, told you I gotta bend over just to see, <laughs> just to see these uh, numbers. It's not that they're that little. I'm just that blind. Uh, oh yeah. Our dark green again. Let's get that bugger back out. And that was 52. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to just do these couple of things. So yeah, needless to say, we did get the new humidifier casing cabinet, I guess. And it's been working fine. So, But what we ended up doing is we had... In the other house, we had this, it's called a boot tray. Let me zoom you back out. Um, yeah, it's called a boot tray. And it's just a real great big tray that we would have by the door coming in from the garage. Because that's the only door, you know, basically we ever came in from. Probably like most people. And rather than coming in with your, especially in wintertime, coming in with your wet shoes, your wet boots, you know, whatever, onto the laminate wood flooring, we had this boot tray um, that had a little lip, you know, on it. 
and you would put your shoes and your boots in there. Well, here we don't need it because we come in from the garage into the breezeway where I have a bunch of rugs and whatnot to put the shoes and stuff on. So, Bobby had a brilliant idea, at least for now, put this in the boot tray <laughs> just to make sure. Now, hopefully, we won't even need the humidifier much longer. And, you know, spring and summer will be here where the humidity will be higher. And, yeah, we won't, we won't need the humidifier anymore. Eh, time will tell. How do you like a birdie? Yeah, I think it's purdy. <laughs> the purdy birdie. <laughs> oh my goodness, Lisa. Okay, so I'm going to finish this off camera. And you should see it the end of the month when I show you everything I've done for the month. My gosh, that isn't going to be that far off. It's the 21st already. Wow. We only have like a week and a half left of March. Oh my heavens. So the first quarter of the year is almost done. Wow. Cannot believe it. All right, guys. I am going to leave the color and chat there then for this week. Again, sorry. This, this got a little late. Eh, it's only a day. <laughs> Um, but again, I have, I hope everybody has had a fantastic weekend. Let me know what you were up to. Let me know what you guys are coloring or if you're diamond painting or doing some other craft, let me know in the comments below. I'm really rhyming a lot today, ain't I? Aren't I? Ain't, ain't a word, but yet yeah, it's in the dictionary. Okay. So. Yes, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed our color and chat and, and getting, you know, seeing what each other is up to. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. I hope everybody's having, having a fantastic day and has had a fantastic weekend. And as always, happy coloring. Bye, guys. Thank you.